the shock cause I've broken all free. I'm walking in liberty, created to worship, created to pray.
oppression is broken.
We have in the house also our pastor, Sarah LaShawn Jones, my apostle from Lincoln, Georgia. And we're not going to prolong the time. We want to just stay in the flow, amen. amen. All the announcements we have, we will take it up on the end, but we want to just stay right here, right here, right here, right here, right here in this presence. Because that's what we get. Whatever we need yes. is right here. There's the fullness of joy. It's in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. A motion and a motion. We're going to have Prophet Samantha Benton Lucas to come. She's going to release glory to God. That what the Lord has laid on her heart.
confront Jerusalem with her outrageous violations. Say this, the message of God, the master to Jerusalem, you were born and bred among the Canaanites. Hallelujah. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. Hallelujah. Amorite and Hittite. You can research it on your own time, but they were not of God. They were evil in their ways. Hallelujah. And the word says, on the day you were born, your umbilical cord was not cut. You weren't bathed or cleaned up. You weren't rubbed with salt. You weren't wrapped in the baby blankets. No one cared a fig for you. did a thing to care for you tenderly in these ways. You were thrown out into a vacant lot and left there dirty, unwashed, a newborn nobody wanted. And then I came by. I saw you in your miserable, I saw you in all your misery and in blood. You were bloody. Yes, I said to you, lying there helpless and filthy, live. Somebody said live. Come on, say it loud, man. Say, live. Live. Hallelujah. Grow up like a plant in the field. And you did. You grew up. You grew tall. You matured as a woman, full-breasted with flowing hair. But you were naked and vulnerable, fragile and exposed. I came by again. I saw you. I saw that you weren't ready for love. That you were ready for love and a lover. Hallelujah. I took care of you, dressed you, protected you. I promised you my love and entered the covenant of marriage with you. Hallelujah. God the master gave you my word. You became mine. I gave you a good bath, washing all of that blood, all of that old blood. And I anointed you with aromatic oils. I dressed you in a colorful gown and I put leather sandals on your feet. I gave you linen blouses and a fashionable wardrobe of expensive clothing. I adorned you with jewelry. I placed bracelets on your wrist. I fitted you with a necklace, emerald rings, sapphire earrings, and a diamond tiara. Hallelujah. You were provided in everything precious and beautiful with exquisite clothes and elegant food, garnished with honey and oil. You were outstandingly and absolutely stunning. You were a queen, you became world famous, a legendary beauty brought to perfection by my ordinance, the decree of God the master. I wanna quickly read this last portion. Hallelujah. But your beauty went to your head and you became a common whore. Grabbing anyone coming down the street and taking him into your bed. You took your fine dresses and made tents of them, using them, hallelujah, as brothels in which practice your trade. This kind of thing should never happen, ever. For the sake of time, because I want to move right away, I want to stop there, hallelujah. I read a lot, and it's a lot in what I just read. But the word of the Lord is this. All of us can attest to the fact that God found us. He found us in a place of filthiness. We were squirming in our own blood. We was in toxic. We was toxic. Hallelujah. He adorned us. We gave him our yes. We entered into a covenant with him. But what happened? Hallelujah. We fell from our first love. My God. The Spirit of God said, I saved you, I entered the covenant with you, I trust you, I anointed you, I called you. Hallelujah. But you turned from me. Hallelujah. And so the Spirit of God is saying to you, to me, because all of us can find an area in our life where we have not totally surrendered to the Lord. He's saying to you, he's saying to me, he's saying to America, turn back to me. Come away from the world. Come away.
from your own mind, your own thinking. Come away for the way that you think is right, but the end thereof is death. Come away. My God. Hallelujah. He said, I dress you in fine linen, expensive clothes. Hallelujah. That is symbolic to the fruit of the Spirit. It's symbolic to all that is God and of God, but you turned away. And so the Spirit of God said, this is your day to turn back. Amen. I know that sometimes we look for a prophetic word that tickles our fancy and tickles our ears. But I believe that in this hour, like never before, the Spirit of God is summoning you to come. Yes. To get back into alignment with Him, with all of you. Yes. Even in America. We understand the history of America. He blessed this land. This land was not of God, and so on and so forth. But He blessed it. He anointed it. He called it to be an example. A city upon a hill where all men can see the glory of God has in this land. But we turned away. And so America. Oh America. God has said come back to your first love. Come back and enter back into covenant with him. Hallelujah. And so I just want to pray. Before the woman of God comes up. I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm going to move out of the way. But I want every one of us to bow our heads. And pray. And find that area that you know between you and the Lord that you have forsaken him in that area. Your time, your devotion that you once had. Hallelujah, you're serving him. Hallelujah. What idol have you put before the Lord? Hallelujah. What materialism have you put before the Lord? What, hallelujah, what relationship, hallelujah, whether it be career, hallelujah, whether it be whatever, what have you put before the Lord? Father, I thank you. I give you glory. I give you praise for your word, Jesus. We, your people, stand in your presence and repent. We repent from turning away. We repent for leaving our first love. We repent for not keeping our word to you, Father. But we thank you, oh God, for our Savior. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that even in that passage of Scripture, Lord God, that was an image of salvation. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers us, washes us, redeems us, puts us back into proper position with you. God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We thank you for accepting us yet again. We thank you for your mercy and your grace that's new every day. And God, this day we enter into covenant with you yet again. And we give you our yes. God, have all of us. Take up resident space in all of us. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree and declare to be so. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to bring up the woman of God. Come on. Come on. Put your hands together. Put your hands together for our pastor, Sierra
people and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph. I submit to you, men and women of God, that we are in a land that there are people that are in high places that know not our God. As the prophets begin to release concerning the true estate of America, we are dealing with those that are in high power that know not our God. They know not the history that God has created with man. And so God is giving the answers of the reminder to his people to remind of the God that we serve to remind the taskmasters of the God that we serve to remind them that in the beginning he was amen My God. so they said now there arose up a new king over Israel which knew not Joseph and he said unto his people behold the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we so they said, come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when they're fallen out any war, they also join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so God, so got them up out of the land. Can I tell you that there are so many people that are under the administration of demonic councils that don't recognize the light and the power that you represent. And so they are intimidated by your presence. So they conspire to get you up out of the land. I'm talking to Judah right now. I'm specifically talking to God's people because I know that we have been told the lie that the royals are over in England and Britain. But can I tell you? that the royals are really the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel, which is us. This is why they have tried to make us believe that we are the minority when we really are the majority. If you even look into the coding of our DNA, melanated people are the only people that can produce every other race. Come on, somebody. I need you to understand that you are Because you are descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. As a matter of fact, Moses was a black man. Come on. Come on, Apostle. So, we have dealt with the bondage and the constriction of ideations, principles, philosophies, teachings that have been lies that have been designed to keep you ensnared they call it dealing wisely with you but god calls it dealing foolish with you because if they had any sense they would recognize the grace that god has placed upon each one to reflect the image of the godhead so they said, come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. Can I tell you that the enemy is okay as long as you are in a place of division, as long as you are in a place of subtraction, as long as nothing in your life is adding up to the order of God. But when you begin to multiply, baby, you become a threat. Some of the warfare that you're dealing with is not you are losing, but because you are gaining, God is multiplying your God is multiplying your sphere of influence. God is multiplying your power. God is multiplying your breath. He's multiplying your width. He's multiplying your length. He's given many of you longevity to reach the places that your mama, daddy, sister, and brother could not reach. And this is why the of change in your bloodline. He knows that when you come on the scene that you are about to annihilate everything that came before your ancestors because what they tolerated, you won't tolerate. Amen. So they said, let us deal wisely with them lest they multiply.
multiply. See, the fear has always been that you will multi multiply. I even begin to recall the name and the lyrics of a song from Buster Rhymes. He said, we are dangerous because too much of us is dangerous. We're so dangerous. We're so dangerous. You need to know that you are fully loaded and dangerous with the power of God. But the only thing that is going to shift you into that place of power is when you awaken to it. Because a lot of us are giants and we're sleeping. God is calling us out of our sleep and our slumber. This is why God's got to give you the 411. Because when you run with the right information, oh my God, imagine what can shift in your entire world when you run with the right information. When you run with the right revelation. When you run with the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Let's say multiply. And it came to pass that when they're falling out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so, go get them out of the land. There has been a strategic plan to get you out of the land. Can I tell you coronavirus was a strategic plan to get God's people out of the land? Can I tell you that every other disease and every other governmental experiment was a strategic plan to get God's people out of the land? They literally are trying to create a pure race of people. Amen. Yes. Well, we ain't going to go there because mm. people can't handle that truth. Uh, preach. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And that thing right there shook me to my core. Because I began to think about all of the years that I carried burdens that were not my own to carry. We were afflicted with their burdens. Their problems. Their insecurities. Their fears. So they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pidum and Ramesses. God said that the stones that the builders rejected have transmuted their purpose. And they begin to lay the bricks of the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of Babylon, all because they were misled by misinformation. There was so the miseducation of the Negro. Can I tell you that there are so many of us, we don't even realize that the things that we practice is rooted out of misinformation and miseducation. Why? Because we've been building for Pharaoh treasure cities. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. They were greedy because of the children of Israel and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. They made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and brick and in all manner of service in the field, all their service wherein they made them to serve. The king of Egypt spoke to who? The midwives, not just any kind of midwife, but the Hebrew midwives, of which one of the names was Shifra and the name of the other Pua. And he said, when you do the office of a midnight midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon their stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. This is why we've got to crown our daughters with royal diadems to understand that they may have come through the passageway of great pain, trials, and tribulation, but they are marked for greatness. They are marked with a purpose. They are marked to shift the entire world. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt, Egypt commanded them, but saved the men and children alive. Can I tell you people of God that many of you have been hindered in your prophetic process because you were under the administration of a mass murderer and not a Ooh. midwife. Can I tell you that a real midwife will disobey the laws of the land. A real midwife will put themselves at risk so that whatever it is that the kingdom of God suffereth to get here, that it comes with success. Oh. God. 
God. Yes, God. God is not just calling for any type of midwife. It, 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 it needed to be a Hebrew midwife. Praise God. So the king called for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing that have saved the men and children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. But they are lively and are delivered, meaning they are full of production. And see, this is why the enemy hates what is coming out of the matrix Jesus. of heaven. This is why when heaven is pregnant, we've got to position ourselves on the stools to give birth. Can I tell you what is the real stool? The stool is not on the stage. The stool is, is it not prayer? behind the curtain Come that on many of us don't realize God. Two. The Bible says, and there was a man of the house of Levi. 
Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. Can I tell you that those Levites were dangerous. Those Levites knew how to worship. Those Levites were priests and they practiced their priestly duties well. So when a man of the house of Levi arises to know a daughter of Levi, you better know that something powerful is on the way. Can I tell you that in this season, that as a daughter of God, you got to be careful who you connect yourself to. Why? Because whatever is born out of that union will be reflective of the two. Jesus. So when when the man rose out of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi, Levi, the woman conceived. And guess what? She bore a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. When God has placed something so powerful upon your life, sometimes he has to hide you to protect you. Jesus. Many of you have been complaining. Season of hiding, and God said, Not yet. Why? Because it ain't your time. Not yet. Why? Because it ain't your time. Why? Because what I have placed on the inside of you is so sacred that I can't release this measure prematurely. So she had to hide him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, now on the flip side, there were those of us that are in that place of translation where we can no longer be hid. And so God is saying, okay, now that you're in a place that no longer can, you can be hid, now I've got to put you in an ark. Now I've got to put you in an ark of bulrushes and daub it with slime and with pitch. Everything that was on the outside of your environment that was not my God pretty. God is using it. He put you in a basket and he is using it to suggest that what was on the outside has not affected what he put on the inside. Yes, God. This is good. My God. When we read this text of scripture, we think that it was a pretty scene. And it absolutely was not. The Bible says that she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime. Now, I don't know about you, but there is nothing pretty or nice about being surrounded by slime or being surrounded by mold or being surrounded by uh, environments that are not conducive to your health. Somebody would have said in today's time that she was a bad parent because of what she did. But God lets us know that sometimes you got to use what you got in your environment to cause what he birthed through you to survive. Jesus. So this lets me know that nothing that we have experienced is unusable. The Bible says that she put the child there in and she laid it in the flags on the river brink. Now notice, on the river brink. I told you that tonight's message is I was born by the river. The Bible says that his sister stood afar off, meaning to wit, meaning, meaning to watch what will be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along by the riverside and when she saw the ark among the flags she sent her maid to fetch it now this is very interesting because most people that see uncommon signs and symbols would ignore it and just say, oh, you know, like if you're on the beach and, a, and a, a bottle washes up on the shore, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna go pick up that bottle because number one, you don't know where it came from and, and you don't know the nature of that thing. But can I tell you that God will place such a grace as a, upon you even in the midst of adverse times in unproductive environments that will attract kings and queens to you because you've got to make it to the palace. You've got to get to the high place. God don't care how you got to get there as long as you get there. She could have ignored that and said, oh, it's just another basket full of trash that, have, that has come down the now. But no, there was something 
even the family dynamics that you were born in. Moses came out of a Hebrew lineage, but he was sent to an Egyptian house. Why? Because everything about him spoke to the mantle of deliverance. See, water was his element. This is why when he grew and he got to a place where he had to part the Red Sea, see, the river recognized the mantle that was on Moses from the beginning. This is why he had to be born by the river. What was designed to drown him out? What the tides and the waves that was designed to kill him was the very thing that God used to sustain him. Jesus. Praise God. When she opened it, she saw the child and behold, the babe wept. Can I tell you that the activation of your awakening is sometimes by the sound print come on the voice print of your cry your baby your destiny is on the inside but it's crying out waiting for you to manifest waiting for you to metamorphosize waiting for you to get in position waiting for you to stop complaining waiting on you to wake up waiting on you to realize who you Egyptians. <laughs> 
Come on. Moses was a murderer because he was a mass deliverer. Moses did not play any games. Moses was the definition of a real killer. Moses said, oh, okay, so you just going to beat our Hebrew women in my face, not on my watch. Let me go snatch this Egyptian and let's have a conversation later. But on the flip side of this, God began to speak to me. He said, tell my people that the Egyptians that were of yesteryear are not the Egyptians that you see today. And because many of you have refused to look at your bondage in the face and confront the system of bondage and everything that has been designed to keep you mummified, you have a walk in the earth with a There are some Egyptians in your life that is nobody else's responsibility to murder but you. <laughs> Come on, Apostle. There are some battles that you have been called to fight that ain't nobody else's responsibility to fight but you. I prophesy to all 50 of you in this building tonight that you're about to get your fight back.
takes a special kind of love for God to put yourself in a place of responsibility and stewardship of what does not belong to you. I'm going to tell you right now, I got a family member right now in the hospital fighting for her life. She gave me a call this morning. She said, Apostle, she said, I need to talk to you because earlier in the midnight hour, I was above the expanse of the earth and I was fighting with this woman that was telling me that you are not supposed to be on this planet. You should have left a long time ago. The, oh my God. She began to shed me. She said, I was holding on to the silver lining and the woman was trying to take my hands off of the cord. But how many of you know her? I taught my people and those connected to me that they are divergent. They are divergent. And all of these stages and all of these encounters are nothing but a place designed to get you to fear. But when you know your authority, the woman of God began to say to me, she said, I kicked that woman. And I began to tell her, you don't have the final say so. Look at my life. And I decree and declare right now, even in this atmosphere, that she shall live and not die. Let's get the other one. 
even by use of their own blood to access your DNA. I declare today that the Spirit of the Lord shall hide you. Prepare yourself for angelic visitation. Even 
alone. We go hard in the pain for God. It doesn't matter what the enemy tries to do. We are determined to press into the presence of God. Because his presence is our life support. Yes. I would cease to exist if I did not obey God. It is my prayer that each and every one of you that comes, that is here at the sound of my voice, that you never take the outpouring of the presence of God for granted. Life can change in the twinkling of an eye. You don't know what your praise, your worship, your release is doing in the atmosphere. Know that submission to God is the real power. It is the real win. I pray that those of you that heard this message on today, that you run with this. It's time to awaken. You were born by the riverside because out of you runs the river of deliverance. Prophesy to your belly that where there has been steel and stagnant waters, steel and stagnant waters, that God would stir up the river of your intercession, your passion for the Christ, your pursuit of purpose, your push to birth. We declare. That you will never lose this passion. Those of you that are watching by way of social media right now at this anointing, I want you to grab a 111 dollar seat. And I want you to sow this for those of you watching via live stream. Cash out is you. If you would like to do online giving, you can go to www.atljworldwide.com. Go to the contact or shop button and you'll be able to see the options to donate to this powerful move of God. We are reaching souls all around the globe yeah. to the glory of God. Again, that cash out is U-K-G-I-A, cash tag, U-K-G-I-A, all caps. For those of you in the audience, grab a seat of $111. We're going to sow into this supernatural day, 411-411. We will always be in the know of God. We will access the Spirit of God through counsel, wisdom, and knowledge. There are those of you that say, Apostle Sierra, I don't have the $111 to sell. Grab your best seat. Whatever is truly a sacrifice. One thing about the kingdom of God, we are begging. God's people to sow into his kingdom. Either you're going to obey God or you wait. Sometimes we got to recognize when there is a special anointing So in that atmosphere. I decree and declare as you grab the best seed whether that is cash Put your seed in the basket. May God multiply the seed of the soul. May the Lord multiply the seeds of the soul.
Because if you did not give, don't come up. Don't play with a real apostle or prophet. Because he could be lying in the Bible. And we be glad. And we don't have any of those among us.